Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna be talking about something that is very hard to talk about and a little bit controversial right now, but it is making headlines and it does kind of seem like a pattern. So a lot of people are talking about it and it is non-white, white supremacists. Yeah, there've been several incidents in the news. Uh, today, there was an incident at the White House involving somebody of Indian American descent um, that was a declared neo-Nazi white supremacist all the way to the tragic shooting at Texas Allen Mall that involved a Mexican American who was also a white supremacist and neo Nazi. So, a lot of people have a lot of comments on the internet, and a lot of people are confused. A lot of people are arguing. Obviously, the debate is going over here, over there, over there. We're going to try to get into some of the comments, our own takeaways. Like I said, Andrew, this topic is incredibly difficult to understand, right? A lot of people are confused, understandably. Yeah, I think it comes down to ideology, identity, cultural identity, self hatred, a lot of mental illness, of course. So everything's wrapped up in it. And I'm not saying we have the answers, but we're here to just have a productive conversation if this is not a conversation that you've had before, which many people have not. So, you know, if you're interested in seeing us try to tackle this, hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And you know what I've noticed, Andrew? I think the mainstream media either doesn't want to, does not know how, or is completely oblivious to even being able to talk about this subject. Yeah, I've because seen... Because they're, they're just pushing it down the news cycle. I've seen them bring it up, but a lot of people doubted it at first, and the conversation has been very, very, very short. Yeah, and it's possibly because the media is white themselves, and they're almost like, well, they're not white. I just... But they're saying they're white supremacists. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I just think people are having trouble actually having even an actual conversation about this. Um, Andrew, what are just some real quick things that you could talk about these two incidents? We will get into other incidents. Like I said, one thing we don't want to do is like sensationalize it just to get clicks and views and stuff like that. Like, I don't want to show a lot of photos only if it's like super relevant. And you know, uh, we just trying to have a more productive conversation. What are things that people have to initially even keep in mind before we get into the comments? I think you have to understand that uh, the belief in white supremacy doesn't mean that you have to be white. You can be non-white. There are some known Asian white supremacists. There are known uh, Latino white supremacists. There is now apparently an you know Indian uh, Indian white supremacist. And I'm sure out there there is maybe a few black white supremacists. Right. People who literally do not like themselves are against their own people, but they believe in that system. So you don't have to ethnically actually blood-wise be white. You're saying it's more like an ideology. Yeah. And I, I think the easiest way I can explain is there was even white Americans of, I guess, of Western European descent that had joined the Taliban too. So right. that was theoretically a something that didn't make sense to people. Right? There are so many different people in this world with so many different beliefs that some of them do join a team that you really would not expect, okay? Right, that do, you wouldn't think look like, obviously, blonde hair, blue-eyed, like David Duke or whatever. Anyway, continuing on, what is the second thing that people need yeah, to know? Yeah, obviously, you know, due to the fact that uh, the Allen Texas mall shooter, he had actually been discharged from the army right, for mental illness, and they actually stopped, took his guns away, right? But then they didn't really correspond with the Texas officials or the Texas, like, law system, gun system, to ban him from buying guns afterwards. Right, you're saying that there was no communication between agencies. Yeah. That needs to change. Obviously, I'm just saying that uh, maybe it's a little harder than I'm, uh, I'm suspecting, but I'm just saying that obviously needs to change. And also... One thing is like, I know people love saying their names and putting their pictures all over the internet. Obviously, we'll say their names if it's relevant and show a picture if it's relevant, but I really don't like it because I just feel like that doesn't really help. Like, if we're not gonna learn and actually as a country make any changes after all of these attacks, then it's like, why do we keep giving the perpetrator all this attention afterwards? Yeah, in fact, if we show anybody's photo here, I'm gonna try to blank out their eyes just to, you know what I mean? I mean, we're, if we're saying it, we're just saying it to make a point, but I definitely do not want to like fall into the media cycle. Like you said, there's a, it, as much as people know what's wrong, Andrew, the media, they offer clicks. Yeah. Um, let's get into the comments section, Andrew. Somebody said that white supremacy or neo-Nazism, um, it's just a belief system. Just like there was a white guy who joined the Taliban or any other thing that doesn't make sense. It's 2023. Some people are having like, I guess a lot of identity issues where they're not joining the think group that you think they would be a part of. Yeah, but in a, in, a, in a sense, I guess it makes sense because 
Is it weird to just say, oh, only white people can be white supremacists? Right, only pure Western Europeans that look something like they could be from the British Isles in that extended zone. I mean, anybody can believe in anything. And I think that social media doesn't always help in that sense because it definitely can radicalize people and indoctrinate people. Like we said, there have been multiple cases of American white people trying to join the Taliban or the Al-Qaeda. Like, seriously, I, right. I remember some of those cases. Right. There's just been a lot of... Just identity, just bending, man. I think from, it, there's always been, but just even more because of the news and stuff like that. We all have access to information that we never did in previous generations. Somebody said, uh, this is, there's been a big push, Andrew, within white guys who feel bad about what happened, but they don't want whatever Mauricio Garcia did as a Mexican-American to come back to them. So I saw like, maybe like 5,000 comments from white guys going, man, what he did was terrible, but don't label it a hate crime because he's dead anyway, and he already did what he did, so why have it come back on white guys? Right, but they're saying that if you label it as a hate crime, then it's somehow going to make white men look worse again. Right, and then cause a divide in the country when we didn't even do it. This one. <laughs> I right, it right. Uh, I, I guess... I guess I, I don't really know what the goal of this comment is or, or, or what they're trying to say. I, yeah. I don't know how it makes white guys look worse. I guess that somebody was saying, and like I said, guys, these are real internet comments. I did not write any of these. Somebody was saying it's similar situation to George Zimmerman where white people thought he was going to be white, but George Zimmerman actually turned out to be, I guess, half Latino and half white, but not white looking. So then they were like trying to take that uh, strike and move it to another team. Mm. I mean... Yeah, I guess in theory, if he's not white, but he is a white supremacist, obviously that still looks bad for white people, but it's not necessarily villainizing a white man, I guess is what I'm saying. Dude, because because he's, what he, is, he, is, he is like, yeah, if you look at the picture, this 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 guy looks, I guess, appears more Mexican. Um, Somebody said, what if he was a full-blooded German from Argentina, but he still had a um, like Spanish last name? Would he be considered a white supremacist or would he be considered Latino? So now are we just going off like how people look or what if people are mixed or what, what is it going I, on? I guess for this case, because now white supremacy has become, you know, an identity that you kind of just label it white supremacist, but they can be any color. And I think maybe it is... It is worth noting that. That's what I'm saying. We have to have this conversation that there is a growing number of non-white people who are like not that much European blood who have these ideas. Yeah, dude. I don't know, just man. Have to I'm just like saying accept it that it is happening and then let's do something about it. Um, somebody said that it actually has to do with this internet incel white supremacist space that is radicalizing people. It's definitely not traditional in the sense of it being tied to anything from the old KKK days of America of, you know, the 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, 60s. It's like using the same word, but it's like a whole different thing because it's more of an internet-driven identity than anything in terms of like meeting up with like white hoods on or anything. Like it, those two systems are separated. Right. I think that systems are separated, but the hatred and kind of the... the I mean, if you've watched American History X, right, you saw that movie... If you guys have ever seen that movie with Edward Norton, it's a great movie, but I'm saying like that kid, the little brother from that movie could exist nowadays. And that's right. kind of what these people are doing, except it's just not only white kids. Yeah, it also reminds me of that one movie um, with Samuel L. Jackson and Matthew McConaughey. The cult, uh, it's a, t a time to kill. Yeah, they even in that movie alluded to there being a split between like the new punk rock style and the old like... Uh, meet in a church in the countryside style. I don't know, guys. Anyway, guys, like I said, this is the, I'm not close to this world at all, but I'm just trying to unpack it. Somebody said, the only hate crime he sh they should be guilty of is hating humanity. So this kind of brings it back to like, should these crimes be labeled hate crime if they believe in certain ideologies? And will it only work if the skin color matches? Or, or what's even going on right now? Are these people hating humanity? What is the political motivation behind certain groups to label things hate crimes to get them double charged beyond their initial charge that obviously most people deserve believe they deserve? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the whole hate crime thing. I'm not really too bought into like, I guess the usage of that, but definitely this guy hated everybody. And he made posts on his social media account hating on... LGBT, Asian people, Jewish people, right, you're black people, like to the everybody. Texas Allen he was shooter, just right? hating. Yeah, the Texas Allen shooter was hating everybody. Okay, and that's according to 
his posts on social media, and also even I, I believe some eyewitness accounts from people who used to work with him. Um, I guess this Latino professor who got interviewed for this article about this came out and said that uh, Latinos are a pan-ethnic group that have many different racial identifications within that grouping. For example, everybody thinks that Latinos are like uh, a mestizo look, but Latinos can be pure white, they can be pure black, they can be pure indigenous, or they could be pure Asian and still be Latino. And this is something that only mainstream America, I guess, is learning as America, uh, their uh, sophistication IQ goes up of understanding Latino people. Yeah, but again, I think this is where the white guys want to come in and defend themselves because they're saying, hey, these guys, like, you don't have to be a white supremacist. You don't have to be white to be a white supremacist. So they're saying stop blaming it on the white blood of these guys. Even if they might have some European blood, obviously, look at this Indian kid. Probably, I mean, if he took a DNA test, how much European blood does he really have, right? Probably not a lot. Right. But I'm saying, and then also there are a couple cases of some Asian white supremacists that haven't gone out and committed the heinous crimes, but they have committed right. like they're verbal. They're probably 0% uh, European. tied to Europeans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I guess I guess that's what white guys are saying. White guys who don't want to be villainized, they're like, listen, these people are white supremacists, but it's not because they are part white and like because I'm white, that doesn't make me more of a white supremacist. Right, and I think that the reason why, and some people are going to be like, why is all the discussion going to this whole like racial lane? It's because people feel like there's this divide right now, and any incident that gets associated with their group, they want to really make sure they're like, hey, I don't want to take it unless I really have to, because that's like more strikes on my squad. Right, right, because obviously like there has been a lot of bad press for white people in the past even couple decades, right, right. about everything. So I think, yeah, I don't know. I mean... I, I hope that this discussion uh, can help people be less angry. Like, I just hope that the comment section doesn't make more angry people that leads to yes. more bad I, things. I hope that people can talk it out. And, you know, I never think that when people talk it out on the Internet, they fully come to an agreement. But at least they can see, like, some different perspectives, you know what I mean, to flesh it out. Somebody said, I am Latino myself, and I reported a fellow Latino student that I went to school with because they were on the same edgelord, wear all black, punk rock, emo, make dark jokes thing that this kid was on. And I figured it was better safe than sorry because even if they just needed mental help and they weren't planning on actually doing anything, at least me reporting them will get the mental help that they need. Yes, I think all... Minority communities right now, even if you never thought, you're like, nah, like, oh, man, my, our people don't do that. If they're Asian, Latino, mm. black, dude, white, everybody is possible of doing that. So yeah. I think you need to be ready to call people out on it or like call the, or report them mm. and not just think, oh, well, because they're one race, it means they're not capable of doing it. Obviously, in the past year, we have seen Asian guys shoot other Asian people. Right, right? right, and that's that was horrible. But I'm just saying it can happen. I, so. I think that maybe that stereotype that all mass shooters are white it seems a little bit of a past decade now. It's it's not. I I can't say that because I think once we say that, then we're saying people from our community are not capable of it, but they are. Right, and you have to see the warning signs. And somebody said, by the way, guys, warning signs are not just goth punk alt looking people wearing all black. Although statistically, it seems like. Possibly a higher amount of mass shooters have this aesthetic, wearing leather boots and things like that. It's a lot of other factors too. Their gaze, their eyes, their energy, the things that they say, their internet posts, the things they say to people outside of the internet as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, somebody said uh, he had mental illness uh, issues and somehow he was still able to get a machine gun. And somebody was like, yes, of course, in Texas, they probably gave him a discount. And obviously this went into a whole thread of um, basically like, you know, gun control and so many other issues that are legitimately do pop up, but I think they're only like one s pizza slice of the whole pie. I guess, David, to kind of take it away and hopefully, you know, you guys gain something from this conversation. Uh, I guess like, what did this, how did this open your eyes? Like looking into all this? It's confusing to me. To be honest, I think a lot of the issues we talk about, I generally can come to some sort of like hard takeaway. But definitely my takeaway is that like, this is terrible. Whether it's a mental health issue, like we said, people being radicalized by certain corners of the internet. Um, because this is all domestic stuff right now. I think for the longest time and in previous decades, everybody's focused on radicalization overseas. Mm -hmm. And now we got radicalization within America. And 
now you it just turned into so much arguing and politicization. You know, after Texas Allen happened, the Allen Texas shootings happened, Joe Biden came out and said white supremacy is the number one threat to America. A lot of people on the right, they said, yeah, it happens, but I, I don't even think it's in the top 50 things that are wrong with America. I don't know who's right, but it's like, it's probably higher than 50 for sure on the priority list, but is it number one? And if it's number one, is it just any color of people who buys into it? Like what's going on, you know? Like I'm saying both sides are politicizing it. Yeah, well, I, I guess that ideology has proven to be pretty toxic on a lot of levels. Um, not saying that that's the only toxic ideology, but clearly it's been able to manifest itself within its population in the worst ways possible. Because there's other ideologies that you can disagree with, but maybe it just hasn't really made people shoot several people. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely think that... Uh, I, I think the issue stands on my, my belief is like, listen, I don't care what color or what background you think this classmate comes from. If they really are showing signs like that and they're in America and they have access to guns, you got to say something. You got to yeah, report them. I think you have to report them as much as it pains you because maybe they're not always like that. They have a moment where they're nice and then the moment where they slip into that dark place. I think you got to report it especially yeah. in 2023 you got to be on it yeah. and uh, do it anonymously through text message whatever technology you need to do to make you feel like you can do it um honestly andrew i think there's like anywhere from three to ten major issues that are impacting this right whether you said the interconnectivity of government agencies uh gun control whether it's mental illness all these things need to be addressed it seems like almost none of them have much movement. So how can the whole issue change of this risk exposure for everybody in American society if there's several factors at play and I don't see any movement or major movement, at least maybe a little bit, on any of them? I, yeah, I don't know. Some of these things are beyond our control at the moment and the only people that can do anything are the people that we vote into power. So that's it, I guess, for some of these things. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Like we said, there's like so much stuff. I didn't want to get into it. You know, a lot of it just went, I don't even know, into a space that I was just like, it's too crazy, man. Yeah, well, let us know in the comments down below what you guys think about this. Uh, this is a confusing topic, but yeah, listen, non-white, white supremacists, they exist now. It's here. So just so you know, uh, that is something now that exists. Yeah, so... Uh, please, uh, yeah, the hard topic to talk about, of course. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, and uh, please hit that like button. And until next time, we're out. Peace.